Hello, hello. I forgot to turn off my air conditioning. Oh, goodness. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to another live stream. Um, so for the first half an hour, we're going to have a live chat. So feel free to say where you're from, who you're painting with. Um, if this is your first time, um, either painting with me or just painting in general, let me know. And this is in the way. Let me just turn this down. There we go. But yeah, welcome to another live class. If you are watching the replay, uh, I will leave timestamps below so that you can just kind of skip ahead if you don't want to hang around for the chat. Um, I will leave that below for you and if you are um, wanting to get the traceable for tonight um, I will also leave that in the um, chat box below for you Let's see if this works mm, let's see I just got a new, I'm trying out a new like bot thingy. So if you're here, that's probably why there's gonna be some weird stuff going on. Um, oh, there it is. Perfect, I had it backwards. Hi. I almost said good morning and it's definitely night here. I don't know why I had the the itch to say good morning, good afternoon, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, wherever you're at. Let's see. from Ontario, Canada, painting myself and painting the yeah. Hi Tanya. Um, no worries, we'll see you in a bit. I'm just gonna get my stuff ready. I have the traceable and I wasn't sure if I was gonna use it, but I think I think I'm going to only because then I won't have to deal with figuring out proportions of an elephant because sometimes that can be hard which if you're down to do that absolutely go for it but sometimes it's nice just to relax and paint and not have to be focused on like the sizing or the shapes or whatever i will go over um just after i get it on there during the class i'll go over like basic shapes and stuff um of the elephant in case you don't have the traceable or don't want to use the traceable um, or are a painter and, and don't have access to it. Um, but yeah, so, but yeah, let me know where you're from. It's always fun to get some patrons in here and being like, I'm here. <laughs> so you have to figure out where I want this. Excited to paint. Last night I painted, actually. Who was, um, did anybody tune in for my live Instagram? Because that was fun. Let me turn this off. Don't need my phone on. Let me know if you tuned in for the live Instagram, because we ended up, I painted, I'll show you what I'm pa I painted in, in a little bit, um, but I painted a unicorn, and it came out so well. Okay, I think that's fine, that's what I want. Light. 
I feel like it's the last, I feel like the last, I don't know, week has been so up and down with the weather here in San Diego. It's been like hot and then like either it was yesterday or the day before it was like really nice out. It was super cool. Like the whole day. We had the windows open. It was so nice. And then yesterday and today, it's just been hot. It's been like, I don't, I don't want it to be hot. Maybe that's my, my 33 week pregnant mind thinking, but, um, I don't know. I'm not a fan of warm weather. <laughs> So if you have any questions about our painting or colors or anything like that, um, now is the time to ask. I will be going over um, all the colors I'll be using. There's not very many colors in this, which is kind of nice. Um, I didn't put raw umber on the list, although I may use it. So if you have raw umber, you might as well get that out because I think I think I might use it to darken up the orange and red tones um, instead of black because black tends to gray out colors and brown still it still keeps the warmness of the actual like color. Um, Tony says, it's hot here today. I love fall. It's my, yeah, I love fall and winter. Mostly because I love scarves and boots and like that type of attire. But San Diego doesn't really get that cold. So there's that. Which don't get me wrong, I love San Diego. Um, but. Sometimes it would be nice to be cold and I can wear pants more often instead of shorts and, you know. Oh, let me show you guys what, um, where did I put it? I'll probably show it again later. Um, this is going to be a class in October. I know that's like really far away but with my pregnancy I have to like plan a little bit further ahead um nowadays because I well I want I want a little bit of time off <laughs> um so I'm planning out a little bit further ahead um so in beginning of September I'll have two months of content to like show you guys versus just like the month ahead so in October I wanted to do a unicorn because we haven't, I don't think I've done a unicorn. Well, I, I did like, um, I did the like unicorn, like silhouette sunset one. Um, if you were around for that, I did that one, but it was like subtly unicorn and I wanted to do like a unicorn. Um, so I did this last night and pretty excited about it. Um, it's a pretty simple background even though I know it doesn't look like it. It's just pretty much blue, some clouds, um, and then all of the greenery is q-tips. So that goes by really fast and then we can spend most of the time on the unicorn and adding detail and blending and things like that. So I'm really excited for this um, and theoretically you could change the color like if you wanted the m m like all the colors to be purple toned you could do a purple sky and then purple undertones for your um for your unicorn or if you wanted to add pink in it you could add rainbow hair you could really do whatever it is you wanted to do with it so i feel like it's pretty versatile in 
um, being able to like make it your own. So I'm excited for that one. Um, spring and fall for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm excited for it. That will be, I believe, the 25th of October. Um, because the one before that, um, I think I'm gonna do like a window water one where like we focus on like water droplets and stuff like that because some people have been asking for um, water, like that sort of thing. Um, so I think I'm gonna do that for the first for the first class in October. But that'll be a premiere. I won't be live for that one because that'll be like a week after I I um, give birth and like I don't want to sit in a chair for that long. <laughs> but and I guess I'll still be sitting in a chair. I just won't be. It'll be live, and I'll be live. But not for teaching. Um, I almost did for this class. I almost did other animals too, like an elephant one. Oh, you know what I should do? I wish I would have thought about this before. I could have. I could have done like different animals instead of just like have a traceable for like an elephant or a mom and baby giraffe or a mom and baby tiger and people could like choose which one they wanted to do maybe i'll add that let me know if that's something you would like for me to add um what would you recommend for tracing on the canvas on a canvas board hmm good question um if you if you have tracing paper that is what I would suggest. Um, you could theoretically, I know there's a way if you put like charcoal on a piece of paper and then you flip that over and then like you put the charcoal on the back of the, the tracing of the traceable, you put it on the back of the traceable, you lay it down, you tape it or whatever, and then you draw like on, you like you draw on like the outline I believe it will transfer you just have to be careful not to like touch anywhere else um, the only thing that I would say is kind of like pencil which I tend to not I tend to not use if I'm like using um, like lighter colors it will change the color of the paint um, that's the only thing. So I think, I think if you're doing it for, for this one, I think it would be okay because, and I would, I wouldn't do, I would only do the elephant outline. I wouldn't do, um, I definitely wouldn't do the circle, um, because you're going to be putting white on that. Um, and that'll change the color, which I mean, theoretically you could just do a couple coats and it should be, you know, it'll dry. You can paint over it. Um, but honestly for canvas boards having tracing paper is probably your best um, bet if you don't have that and, and you have charcoal it would be worth a try but again I would only do the elephants um, and the trees are easy enough to put in like you don't need I, d I don't think you would need to put those in um, I put them on the traceable just in case somebody wanted it, but. Yeah, you're welcome. I wish I had a better answer, um, especially if you don't have charcoal or <laughs> tracing paper. Um, 
because I know like I mean I don't have tracing paper but that's mostly because I work with I don't really work with panels very often um, I'm sure if I did work with panels more often I would probably um, I'd probably get some tracing paper but but yeah just be careful about the charcoal because it will it will um, smudge and it, it's kind of messy Couldn't figure out whether I wanted, I wanted to put the trees in there. I feel like I'm so much less talkative this time around. If you're here, say hi. If you're getting ready with me, say hi in the comments. Let me know you're here. Or else I'm just like staring at a screen of myself. <laughs> I don't want to stare at myself. I want to read your comments and talk to you. Hi, Bonnie. Um, I've been meaning to get into my art, but it's been super hard finding time due to life. Yes. I appreciate this live. I will definitely rewatch and follow your tutorial. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, I would, I feel like when it's something that you really want to do, you have to schedule it just like anything else. It can't just be when you have free time because other things will take up your free time and take up your priority unless you make it a priority, if that makes sense. Because I have to do that with things that I want to do I have to like put it in the schedule like it, it maybe not like physically like write it down or anything like that but I have to like mentally put it in like okay I'm gonna do this at this time or whatever and set that time aside and make sure that I plan around it so that I you know I can keep that in my schedule because as at least for me as a pregnant mom of two I don't have a lot of free time <laughs> If at all. <laughs> um, so if I have things that I want to do that are considered like extra, most of the time I have to like plan for it. I have to plan my free time. I'm gonna get my paints out. It's not very many paints to get out. And I put I put on the the list um essentially black, white, red, yellow. But if you have an orange, go for it. Um, or if you want to change the color of the background, you can also do that. Um, I put that because everybody has yellow and red. Um, if you have a kit, you probably have orange. Um, but if you bought them yourself, you probably have like primaries, black, white, maybe a couple other colors. Um, and orange might not be one of those. So you don't like need orange because you probably have red and yellow. Um, but if you want to use your orange, then absolutely do that um red's good to like darken things up but it's not 
if you have yellow and orange, you, you might not need it. Um, and then black. And then as I stated earlier, if you have raw umber, I didn't put it on the list, but if you have raw umber, um, that would be probably, it would be better to use brown to darken up the edges and like around, um, around the edges versus your black because then black will tend to gray out your colors um, versus brown will, it'll darken it without like graying it out. And that's usually just what I like to use. That's all I need though. It should be a pretty simple paint night. I'm kind of excited for the simplicity of it. Every once in a while I'll do like a sunset silhouette just because it's it's simple, it's doable, um, it's really nice for kids. Like it's pretty much just colored background and then um, and then black on top so it's um, it's easy for kids sometimes. But that is so we're doing tonight. I'm just excited to be here and paint and relax. Versus last night, so it was a lot more detailed. There was a lot of there was a lot more um, blending that was in it. So let's see. I'm trying to think. I think I have all my supplies. We are going to be using a sponge tonight. Um, if you don't have a sponge, find the oldest brush that you have, preferably like a, a bigger one. So like if I didn't have a sponge, like if I wasn't using a sponge for the, um, for the tree, I'd probably use this one. It is the oldest brush. Uh, it's not, not the oldest brush I have, but it's the oldest brush that I use for stuff. It's old. It's old-ish, and it's like kind of frayed a little bit. Um, and when if I dab it, I can get a pretty good like separation of all of the. Anyways, it's good for trees. I like to use it for trees. So if you do not have a sponge, that is what I would recommend. Um, but if you don't have a sponge, I would also recommend getting a sponge because they are very useful. <laughs> um, I use them for all sorts of things. Blending, trees, texture, um, bushes. I did one recently, I had a private recently, and we used it for the whole background. And then we also used it for the clouds. We kind of like went in circles and we used them for clouds. Anyway, so there's a lot of a lot of uses for sponges. Um, there's also different types of sponges. Um, I know in a future class we're going to be using the daubers. Um, that's different than um, like a round sponge because they have like edges on them, which is really helpful. And actually, I used a sponge dauber to get the round moon here. You just, I took my, my sponge dropper, it was a, it was a bigger one than this, but I just took it and I just went around in a circle, um, and I gave like the perfect moon. Not gonna lie, it's pretty great. Um, super quick. So little hacks that if you have the right tools, um, makes a difference. Obviously I could have just taken my, you know, my brush and done kind of the same thing. Um, but I probably would have had to tamper with the edges a little bit more. But that is literally was like one and done. And it, it took like no time at all. For anyone that's here, if you had the choice to do a different animal than elephants, 
which would you do? What African sunset animal would you have chosen if it wasn't elephant? I mean, obviously you're here probably because you wanted to do elephants, but if you could choose a different one, what would you choose? Or I should say, if it wasn't elephants, which one would you choose? Like, if you couldn't choose elephants. Giraffe. Giraffe was my first thought outside of, like, outside of elephants. It was my first thought of was giraffes. I think lions would probably be my second one. Yeah, like a male lion. Male lion and a cub, maybe. Okapi? What is an okapi? O okapi? I have to Google it. Oh, it's like a... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a... Not quite an antelope, but like... Kind of close. Shorter neck. Okay. Yeah, they kind of look like it, but they have like zebra stripes on it. That's kind of cool. This is what I'm looking at for anyone. For anyone not looking it up, because <laughs> they didn't know what it was. <laughs> they kind of have some cool markings. I mean, obviously it would be a, um, it'd be a sil silhouette. trying to think of other distinctive like the the not the problem but the thing is is about like a silhouette is you have to be able to like know what it is by just the silhouette so like a lion like those you know animals it's like you you see the silhouette and you like know exactly what it is I feel like the smaller animals like the antelope the I don't know how to say this this one oh, oh copy, um, like all of the essentially the things <laughs> the things that the lions would eat. Um, you might not know what it is at first glance, which is totally fine. It's your painting. Um, and also, if you even in this class, if you wanted to do a different one like venture out and not do elephants you want to do a giraffe or something like that you you could do that oh a rhino would be kind of fun i don't see very many rhino paintings rhinos are cool now i just want to go watch lion king just thinking of zazu <laughs> start class. Wasn't looking at the time. Alrighty, see you on the other side. Hello, hello. Welcome to another live class. Um, we are painting this lovely, lovely African sunset. Um, I was saying in the live chat just before this that um, if you wanted to paint something different than elephants like giraffes or somebody saying lions um, or a rhino or some other animal that you would like to paint instead of a elephant that is totally fine um, and go for it if you would like a traceable for tonight's class for the elephants however this is the traceable um, that it's available for all patrons um, and I will leave the link in the description below um, and so if you want that, it's just, it's available for all patrons. Um, I will go ahead, actually, I'll go ahead and leave this up in case, I mean, you can see, never mind, you don't need this. Um, you can see the actual picture that we're going based off of. Um, 
but yeah, so that is what we're doing. I'm going to go over um, paint supplies that I'm going to be using tonight. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and get started on that. I am using acrylics tonight. So I have all of my colors. I'm using um, the main colors I'm going to be using is my red, yellow, black, and then titanium white. However, if you have orange and you would like to use that, go for it. Um, if you do not have orange, that is why I put the red on there so that you can make your orange. There's not really a lot of red in the um, painting, but honestly, you could make this whatever you want. It doesn't have to look like the painting, or it doesn't have to look like the picture. Like if you want to do a purple sunset, you can do that. I don't know why purple is always my suggestion. It's always purple background. I don't know. That's just to say that you can do whatever color you want for the background. Um, but I'm going to be doing kind of the browns, oranges, and yellows. Um, and with that said, I do have my raw umber um, to color the background as well, to darken the background. Um, I was saying earlier that black tends to um, gray out your colors that you're working with, and brown will help keep in that color. It'll just darken it. So for it's not on the list, but if you have a brown, like a darker brown that you want to use, um, I would use that instead of black to darken up the edges. Um, with that said, if black is all you have, then that's totally fine. It'll work. You just have to use a lot less um, because it will overtake your painting. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, so we just have those three colors. The yellow, orange, red, depending on what colors you have. Um, for me, I'll probably just be using my orange and my yellow. I have my raw umber, my black, and then I have my white. So those are the colors that I'm going to be using tonight. Um, and most of these colors are my Hippie Crafter acrylics. And then um, I ran out of my white, so then I have Liquitex Basics. Um, and all of these supplies are in my Amazon shop if you are interested in buying the supplies that I use or that I recommend. Um, with the exception of the... Um, Hippie Crafter Acrylics. I don't know why, but I couldn't find it in order to put it on the list. I'm not sure why. You can just look it up on Amazon, though. Um, so, if you wanted to buy exactly what I use. Um, but if not, I have other... I just have a bunch of basic acrylics, the Liquitex stuff, um, on my Amazon shop. That I will be replacing every once in a while. Um... I will be using a 11 by 14 canvas, so that's what this is, a stretch canvas, um, which means it has sides, tops, and bottoms. I always paint the sides so then I can just hang it right on the wall. Um, you don't have to paint the sides if you plan on, um, I don't know, if you plan on framing it or whatever, um, but I always do it just in case um, I want to give it away or I want to hang it just on the wall. Why not? And then, so 11 by 14, that's the size I'm using. For the brushes, you're just going to want a, a big, medium, and small brush. So essentially, your big brush that you're going to use for the background and blending the background, a smaller brush, uh, maybe a, a couple small brushes. Um, I have both of these. I have a small um, filbert brush and then a kind of a medium to small round brush. And then I have a few detailed brushes. So there's a few different ones. Um, I have a just like a small detail round brush, whatever favorite one you like using. And then I also have a liner brush. The liner brush is not necessary, but it's definitely helpful for putting in all the little branches that if, if you struggle with um, thin lines, it's definitely helpful to have a liner brush. So if you don't have a liner brush, or you need new brushes. I have a brush kit in my Amazon shop and it's the same one that I use. It's $20 or less. Sometimes it's like 12 depending on the day because Amazon does sales and things like that. Um, so if you, if you ever need a new kit of brushes, I've been using them for almost a year and I'm, I'm pretty happy with them. Um, but I also use them so that I can be able to use the same things that you're using. Um, as a student, I know sometimes it's hard when 
you know, the teachers have professional, you know, $20 brushes, as in like one brush is $20, and you just don't have that money to spend. Um, so I put on there a $20 total kit. It also comes with a palette knife and a sponge, which we will also be using in this class. Um, so yes, go check that out if you are in need of new brushes or just a variety of brushes. It's just very nice to have. But all that to say, um, if you struggle with lines and things like that, having a liner brush will really, really help. And a liner brush is just a small round brush that's got a fairly long tip. Okay. Um, hello for everyone just joining where I'm just going over, um, supplies real fast. Um, so we have canvas, paint, brushes, water, a paper towel, and then a sponge. So a sponge we're going to be using for the tree. If you do not have a sponge, don't fret. That's okay. I would highly recommend you getting one because they are really, really versatile in like some of the textures and things that you can do with them. But if you don't have a, um, a sponge, get just a big old brush that you have. Um, and you can use that to kind of, you know, this one's a little bit frayed. You can, um, pounce it on the, um, on the paint and it'll loosen up the bristles and you'll get kind of like a tree like um effect with it so i will i'll show you how to do that tonight um but for the most part we'll be using our sponge okay i think we're pretty much ready to go um i will say that um if you did not join for my Instagram live last night, um, then you wouldn't have gotten the sneak peek. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show it to you just because I'm excited. So we're painting this in October. And I know that's really far away, but with my pregnancy, I'm trying to plan out a little bit further. And so we're painting this in October, and I'm really excited for it. So um, October 25th, put it on your calendars. Um, tell all your friends and all your unicorn lover nieces and you know daughters because it's gonna be a fun one so um, that's pretty much all announcements um, if you ever want to support the channel um, or support the live classes or get extra classes or free traceables or anything like that um, that's available for patrons um, and I have that link down below as well as in the chat. Um, but hello, hi everyone. Um, yeah, let me know you're here. Let me know you're painting along with me. Um, oh, just one last thing is that if you are not a part of our um, artist community, definitely um, go onto Facebook, um, look up under groups, just look up Samantha Anderson Artist Community um, and it should come right up, but that is where you get to post all of your lovely artwork after class. So I would love to see it. Um, I know others love seeing everybody else's in class. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that we are going to do because the background is pretty much the entire thing. The first thing we're going to do is draw out our elephants. Now I used the traceable, so I already have it drawn out. Um, so if you haven't drawn it out yet, um, if you haven't drawn it out yet, you can draw it out with, um, some paint. You can draw it out with a pencil, um, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, you don't have to worry about using pencil for this exact one because we are going to go over it. We're going to go over the outline with black so that when we when we do our background, we'll still be able to see our traceable um, or our what we what we um, painted. Okay, um, so if you are if you don't have the traceable and you didn't or you, or you didn't want to use it, um, you'll get out some yellow. Okay, and the reason I say yellow is so that it's very light. You could mix your yellow with your white. So that it's even lighter it's just enough so that you can see it but it's also so light that if you mess up or you want to make a change or anything like that you can 
um, just leave it and the orange and the white will cover it up. If you used black to do your initial drawing and you messed up or you need to change something, it's going to be a lot harder to cover that up. So what we're going to do um, is I'll do it with you. Um, and I'm going to do mine in black because I already have mine here. Um, well, I'm going to do mine, I'll do mine in like a darker yellow so you can see it. Because the, the yellow white that I'm talking about, you really only want it dark enough so that you can see it. I have to do it a little bit darker so that you can see it on the camera. Um, but I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So if, you are, if you've already done this, you can just kind of hang out for a little bit. Um, I'm going to show those who do not have the traceable what I'm talking about. So I'm going to get some yellow, a little bit of white. Mix that together. Even more white. If I wasn't, if I was doing this for myself, I would make it even lighter. Um, but I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. And you can kind of see it on here. But essentially, you have to think of this in two circles. So you have this circle right here. Okay, I guess maybe three circles. You have this circle, you have the head, and then you kind of have this box. So I would focus on doing a big circle, a small circle a little far away, and then connect that line. Okay. And then you can always, you can come up above and make that little hump, a little mountain on top. And then the first thing that I would do for making the, um, for making the, uh, his, sorry, her legs or his leg could be done. Um, but the legs is just draw lines, draw lines. For where you want them to go this is so that you get the base so um i'm sorry so this is where you get the so you get the base of the direction of them and then you can make them wider okay and give them shape um sandy is asking is this class available after live yes it is all of my classes saved to my um save to my YouTube where you can view it at any time. So once you get the basic lines there, then you can actually start giving them shape. Okay. And mine already have shape, shape so I don't need to do that. Um, and after you're done with that, then you have the mouth, which is essentially, if you think of it almost like a beak, if you think of it in a beak, And you do two, it's going to look really silly, but, but it's like a bird with a beak. That'll get the bottom one, and then you'll know where the top, you'll know where the top is, and you'll just flow it down, okay? And then you'll do the same thing for the, um, you'll do the same thing. So once you get your outline... There's going to be a couple different lines. That's totally fine. All of this is going to be covered in black. So don't worry about any extra lines that you may have. If you go outside of where you want your elephant, that's totally fine too. That's why you're doing it in that bright white yellow um, so that it can be easily covered up. Okay. So for anyone who um, has already done this stage or used the traceable, what you're going to do is you're going to grab either a liner brush or a small, um, a small round brush. It's a bug. See that? See that line right there? That's a, that's a bug juice. <laughs> oh goodness. Um, for anyone who has already done that stage, um, or used the traceable, you're going to go ahead and get out your black. And you're going to 
go over those lines. So essentially you have your sketching stage and now you have your line art stage. So I'm going to grab my black. And I would say that you only need to do this for your elephants and not your trees. You can do it for your trees if you want to, but I think that's, you're going to have to go back over them. Um, so I just wouldn't do that. Um, I would just do the outline of the elephants or whatever animal you're doing. And then you can, and then we can do the trees later. So when you're doing this outline, it doesn't need to be like perfect. Uh, like it doesn't need to be perfectly solid. Um, just enough that you're going to be able to see it when we put a coat of paint over it. And when you're doing this this outline, it's better to go on the inside of your line versus the outside because you can always you can always make your line bigger, like your ele you can always make your elephant bigger with the black after we're done with the outline or after we're done with the um, background, but you can't really make it smaller unless you do like a ton of coats. So for those of you who use the traceable, this one is what yours should look like. And for those of you who drew it, this is what it should look like. With all like the extra lines. But that's totally fine. We're gonna be covering we're gonna be covering up the whole thing with black, so you won't you won't see that. 
Um, let me know when you are done with this stage. And I'll try to, I wanna wait. I have 52 people with me, so I wanna wait until, you know, I have at least 10 of those people saying that they are ready to go. And I understand not everybody is, um, not everybody is painting along. Some people are just watching. Um, hi, Gina. Yeah, I love, I love doing live paintings. I also love watching, though, too. Like, I watch, um, I'll watch the Art Sherpa, I'll watch, um, Angela Anderson, uh, there's a couple others that I'll just like, I'll be like in the grocery store and somebody will come online, I'll just be like watching, getting all my stuff and just watching people paint live is fun. It's very relaxing. Okay, so we have a couple done. I'll wait for a few more. Um, if you specifically were drawing it and you're done, specify that because I know I have some patrons who are done, um, but they had the traceable, so they probably already had it drawn on. So I want to make sure I give enough, I give enough time for those drawing it to draw it and then trace over it with the black. But what's really great is this process that you're doing right now. Um, I can't see the drawing. Wait, I can't see the drawing for the chat. For the chat? What do you mean? The drawing for the chat. Uh, the drawing, do you mean the traceable? The traceable is available in my Patreon for anyone who... Um, for anyone who um, wait, it's in the way. I'm not sure what you're talking about. What's in the way? Her chat block is blocking the painting. Yeah, um, if you are using um. If you're using a phone um, or like a tablet of some sort um, that's not like a computer, you can turn the chat off so you can see the whole um, the whole video. No, are you saying that you're you're done and you were drawing it? Ooh. Yeah, you can at any time you can turn off the chat, um, and you can always turn it back on if you want. Um, but you can turn it off so they can see the whole thing. That's why I suggest that if you have casting abilities, to cast it to a like a TV, and then you don't have to worry about the chat getting in the way. Most of the time, I will. I'll read the chat. If there's somebody. Um, Catherine says, and Ginger Cook. Yes. I thought it, I didn't know her name was Ginger um, until, I don't know, it must have been like until they did, um, recently they did a, a bird tutorial side by side where she taught three of them and her mom taught three. And I thought it was so funny that her mom's name was Ginger because um, her name is Cinnamon. So it's like ginger and cinnamon. Um, I thought that was cute. I like spices. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Anyone can um, kind of catch up during this next stage. Um, so we are going to be prepping um, this whole sun part with white. Um, so once we get that all with white, 
then we're going to move on to the colors. We are going to get our other colors out though. Um, so I'm going to get out my orange. And then I'm also going to get out my raw umber. If you do not have raw umber, you could use a different brown. Um, just a darker brown, like maybe burnt umber. Um, or if you don't have brown altogether, because I didn't put it on the list. Because um, I didn't realize that I, I feel like I needed to put it on the list. I needed to use it rather than the black. Um, but you can use black. It's totally fine if you want to use black. You just have to use a lot less of black versus like you can use more brown if you need to um so go ahead and get your um whatever whatever brush you're using for the background get that out we're going to color this white we're going to prep it white And I will say just be careful and make sure that this line, this line is dry before you go over it with the light. That is my only, my only tip for that specifically. And you don't have to stay inside the circle, I would suggest going outside the circle. That's fine. Um, cause we're going to be blending a little bit of that color anyways. You just want to make sure that it's all covered in white so that it doesn't get left behind. And you'll see that even though I covered over it with white, you can still see the line. Um, if you if you wouldn't have done, um, if you wouldn't have used black outline, it would be really hard to see it at this point, point. Um, and even harder when you use a, like a darker orange color. Um, what brand of paints are you using? Just wondering. Um, for all of the colors, I am using Hippie uh, Hippie Crafter. I was gifted a twenty pack of their stuff, so I'm still using. I'm still going through that. Um, so I'm using their full body acrylics. Um, and then for any other colors that I've run out of, of their, um, cause they come in, you know, two ounce bottles. Um, I use Liquitex basics, um, which I have linked in my Amazon shop, um, for like all, all of the colors that I typically have on hand, um, including different shades of your blues, your greens, your pinks and all that stuff. Um, let's see. Okay. So once you get your white on there and that's good to go, we're going to mix together the base color for our orange. So I'm going to rinse out this color and rinse out my brush because we're going to mix together our orange color. Um, if you wanted to use just orange that's fine if you are mixing your yellow and red together do that now um and i'm gonna use i'm just gonna use my palette knife for this i use this literally all the time so if you don't have a palette knife or like a palette knife kit i would suggest getting it um because i mix my paint with this little palette knife all the time like every single class it's so helpful i feel like i have a lot less wasted paint because i'm not mixing in a brush and then I have to rinse out that brush because I'm not using that brush or whatever. Anyways, it's really helpful. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, um, sorry, tangent. The first thing I'm gonna do is with this orange, this base orange, um, or whatever orange that you mix together with your red and your yellow, first thing I'm gonna do is add 
a touch of brown to it to dull it down because it's not as bright as we think it is. And I'm going to need more orange, actually. There's not enough orange. If you're adding black to your orange, then you're going to need to, um, you're going to need to add a lot less black. So just like a touch of black. Okay, so I've doled down, I've doled down my orange, and I would say this is like on the medium to darker side. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this, and I'm going to add yellow to it. I'm going to add yellow and a tad bit of white. And by doing this, by pre-mixing it this way, it's going to allow for a like a better transition um, from the sun into the rest of the sky. And you don't have to do this, but I find that um, if you if any for anyone who struggles with blending, especially skies, if you pre-mix the transition colors, it makes the world a difference. So I've started doing this in these classes because it helps so much, especially for beginners who, um, who haven't quite gotten down the blending process yet, which blending is like half the battle with acrylics. So if you're not good at blending, don't beat yourself up. It's, it's a hard thing to, to do. Okay, I think I need more white. Oops, just got a bunch of brown in this. All right, so I'm just continuing to mix, adding yellow and white until I get a color that I like to put right next to that sun. Okay, I like that pretty much. Um, and then the next color you're gonna wanna do is anything that's a little bit darker. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of this brown to it. So I took a little bit more of my dark brown, or I'm sorry, my darker orange, and I'm just mixing a little bit of that with a tiny bit of brown. So now I have pre-mixed three different colors of the same sky, of this orange um, that I have that I can play around with. Hi, Linda. Okay. So you have your three colors. Now again, you don't have to do this. If you just wanna have your orange and then you can add your lighter colors around it, like that's that's totally fine too. Um, and if I was painting by myself and I, you know, I know my limitations and I know that I could probably pull that off. Um, but for anyone who's not comfortable doing that, this is a great tool to use 
I've just pre-mixed some of your colors. Usually you have three different, you know, shades. You have your base color, your highlight, your low light. In this case, it's just lighter and darker. Um, so we're going to actually start with our darker first because when we get to the sun, um, we're going to add in a little bit more of that white just so that we can blend it a tad bit. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my biggest brush, dip it in water, dab it off so it's not um, dripping wet grab my darkest like orangey brown and I'm going to start over on the left side And the cool thing about this specific painting is it does have a bit of that like kind of cloudness going on in the background. Um, so if you have a couple streaks or anything like that, like that's okay. Just keep going. So I'm just going to add this dark brown for most of this side. And when I'm going over, um, when I'm going over the elephants, I want to make sure to go over it all the way. And what I mean, what I mean by that is, I don't want to go just up to it because then if there's white parts, then like I'll have to like remix the background color. And like, I don't know, it'll just be, it'll just be better if you just go over the whole thing. And that's honestly, that's why we, that's why we, um, went over it with our black. Um, and I don't know if, I don't know if you can see this on camera. Can you see it? Yeah, I think you can. Um, yeah, okay. So because this sky has a bit of streakiness to it, I'm going to keep going in this direction. Most things that have like an aura of light, like a moon or anything, I'll go in a circle around it. Um, but I'm going to keep the back and forth that I have going on. So I'm going to take my light and kind of go around. Um, you don't have to be too careful because we can always go back over this with our, um, with our white. <laughs> Sorry, my brain. So if you go over it, that's okay. But you're just here to kind of blend, blend this together. And 
And if you're ever trying to blend into an area that's already dried, just go back into that color that you're trying to blend into and add a little bit of that color and that will help. Going back, back into a little bit of that darker orange. When you get over to this side, I feel like there's a little bit more yellow that happens. So you can add a little bit more yellow to this guy over here. All right, so once you have the majority of the orange on there, there's a couple like kind of cloud type things that you can add if you want to, but you don't have to. I'm gonna go back in with my white and just kind of re-put in, um, whoa, that's black. Um, if this ever happens where you put something on there that's not supposed to get on there, get a clean brush with water and just kind of rub it 
and then you can rub off or wipe off the excess. That's good enough. And I'm just using the tip of my brush and pulling it around. To get that edge. And I don't think I'm going to blend it at all. I don't really want to blend it. If you need to turn your canvas, for instance, I might turn mine around so you can get a better angle of the part that you're trying to work on, then do that. Don't strain yourself trying to, you know, trying to paint and not being able to get the angle you need. And if you if you'd like this if you would like this to dry, if you're if you're um, pulling in some of the orange that you just did, um, and you need to wait for it to dry, that's totally fine. Um, we can move on to the bottom of the black and um, the other parts of this. Um, that there, there's other parts of this that we can do. Um, so I'm actually going to. Um, I'm going to go into my black and I'm going to do the bottom real fast because this is just all black so might as well kind of get that out of the way. Right, and now would be the time to decide on whether or not you want to have a very clean um, black line or if you want it to be a little bit fuzzy like in the picture. 
like it's um you know it's further away it's not a close-up um, And what you want to do is you'll start by covering up all of the white specks, um, which is one thing that you have to just make sure that you go all the way down the past, past where you want your black line. So that you don't have to bring it up further than wh where you want it. And if you want it fuzzy, essentially what you'll do is you'll blend. Here, I'll try to do it here. You'll blend whatever color is right above it with your black. So I'm going to rinse out my brush. Get a little bit of this um, color here. And I'm just going to go all the way across. And there you go. So just take that color that's on top of it and just go back and forth or go over it a couple times and it will blend. Um, it'll just blend that line a little bit just so it's not like a clear straight line. Um, not straight as in like straight across but as clean and straight like um, you can make really clean lines with acrylics. Um, but if you want them to be fuzzy, they have to be blended a little bit. So that's essentially what we just did. I want to make sure I got all my sides because I am notorious for being awful at getting all my sides. Mostly because I, I'm not like seeing all sides of it. I'm just kind of sitting here on one side. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of my yellow, a little bit of water. Put it over here 
I need to use a little bit more water. Because there is like a cloud over here. If you want to do this, you don't have to. And I'm just using my filbert brush with a little bit of paint on it, a little bit of water to help it blend. I'm doing a little bit of yellow. And then I'm going into a little bit of that darker orange that's already on the canvas. And I'm just kind of blending that in. And you can literally do this wherever. Like I could take this um, orangey color here and wiggle my brush and create some clouds over here. Just a little bit of water to help it blend in. So you can do this in any, any of these places that you want to do. And this is totally optional. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do one more run of my white. Um, over at least, at least the left side, because I know the right side is going to be um, covered in the black. So it's not going to be as noticeable. Um, but I do want to get a little bit more white in this area. And I need that white to be, I need the white to be dry before I do the tree. So, oops, sorry, I just bumped everything. This is really only if you really want that super white sun. If you don't mind the other colors in it, like the orange is kind of mixing in and stuff, then leave it how it is.
All right. I just put in another cloud because I felt like it. Um. Yeah, I think we are good to move on. Is everybody is everybody good? Um, while our, the rest of our sun dries, we're going to go ahead and put in our tree on the left side. So go ahead and take uh, whatever round brush you have, medium round brush. Mix a little bit of water in with your black, not too much so that it's translucent, but enough so that it um, it's a creamy consistency, almost like liquid foundation. And I'm just going to do one like that. It's going to come up. And you can you can do this in a smaller brush. That's totally fine. This is the main shape of that. And then if you want to add the little branches um, for the, the top of this, you can. I wouldn't spend too much time on the branches um, because they are going to be covered up. But if you want to add a couple, that's totally fine. And now I'm just going to work my way from left to right. And by the time I get over to that, uh, the tree over there, um, my sun will be dry. So I'm going to start putting in um, all of my animals, my two animals. And you can do this with any with whatever brush that you feel most comfortable with in order to fill this in. So if you need to use a filbert, a small filbert, a smaller round brush. It is up to you. And the work that we did lining this earlier is now is the time for that to pay off. Because now you don't have to guess where your lines are. You should be able to see them fairly easy.
And when you're when you're um, filling this in, don't worry if like some of your black paint, if you had a little bit too mu too much water, if you can see through it a little bit, it's not completely solid. Don't worry about it right now. You can always come back and do some touch ups to the places that um, you can see through a little bit. Um, it should dry fairly fast, and you can always come back and add like a second coat in some places. I know um, every every black has a different coverage. Um, some have more coverage than others, so it might not even be that you had too much water. It might just be your black. I just get paint on myself. I did. Nailed it. That's how you know you're a true painter. It's on your forehead. Does anybody else find this part like just super relaxing? You're just like coloring it in with black. Let me know if you find this part like boring, relaxing, or stressful. Because for some I could see it being stressful because it's like, oh, if you mess up, it's like, you know, you'd have to like get the background or and fix it that way. But if you just take your time
or noise. That's weird. Everybody must be really focused because um, cause nobody's commenting, <laughs> which that's totally fine. I get quiet when I'm focused, when I'm focused too. I also forget to eat when I'm focused. Is anybody else like that? You get so focused on like art or a project or something like that, you like realize you forgot to eat lunch or something like that. Forget to eat. do that. Sorry, my head goes in the way. I need to see though. <laughs>
Alright. I think I'm going to add a little bit more of a tail. Um, Luna says, I agree, I always get lost in painting and lose track of time. Many hours later. <laughs> yes. Yup. In college, I used to do ceramics. And I would literally, there was one time I spent eight hours in the, um, the studio. And it was like midnight or something like that by the time I got there. I was like, I didn't have dinner. <laughs> it just like, the time just flew. And I had like, at my school I was able to like, like be there. I think they it closed at like one, like they would come lock all the doors and stuff like that at like one. But I just remember being like, I didn't eat dinner. I should probably go home and eat dinner. Pretty sure that happened more than once. But you know. It's a story of my life. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put in this other tree. I am excited to put in this other tree because then we get to do the kind of the treetops and then we're done. It's, we'll probably end a little bit earlier than expected. Um, so for this, I'm just going to figure out where I want my trunk, which is about here. And then just create all your little things. gosh I still I did ceramics many years ago still have a couple pieces yeah yeah actually that's um my brush my uh my brush holder is something I made so it's like a it's like a vase within a bowl so I put my my brushes in here and then I have like various doodads like I have um this and then I have the little pieces that you know you wrap around them Sometimes I'll put other things in there, but yeah, I have this. Um, my husband can attest there are random things. Here's something I, I made. Um, this bowl. It it was supposed to be a um, like a bird feeder is what I was going for, but it was when I was still early on, and it's way too heavy and it's not big enough to be like a like a not a bird feeder but like a like a water bowl so like that's why I had this thing on top so that the birds could like land on it and it was kind of like viney um vines all up in it um but that's something that I made I'm trying to think if there's anything else in here that I made probably but yeah I definitely still have things that I've made I, I think I have a whole box of things that I made out there. I just can't get, like, I can't get rid of them. <laughs> I think because I, like, so longingly want to go, want to do that again. Like, I want to go back. I want to, like, if I, if I had my own wheel, oh my gosh, that would make me so happy. But it's a, it's a skill that I would love to continue but I don't have the space or like like painting minimal supplies like small supplies like if I'm gonna throw ceramics I have to have a throwing wheel I have to have a large kiln um you have to have like all the dipping glazes and things like that um, I was a big fan, this is one of my works, but 
Um, I was a big fan of like painting. Um, like, so this is something, this is, I painted the vines and then I clear glazed it. So this is like the actual color of the, the actual color of the clay. It was white clay and then I painted. So I was a big fan of like, so I, I did like, I remember I made Bambi and flower and thumper like little figurines and I painted them on and clear glazed them like I did like a minion piggy bank um I did all sorts of stuff but I was I, I loved like painting the ceramics and then clear glazing it um I don't know that was just something I loved doing obviously like doing doing um if you look up Smiley's Ceramics on Facebook, granted, I haven't done anything since like college, but I definitely made a Facebook page for it. So if you look up Smiley's Ceramics, you'll probably find my old work. I still have it active. Like I haven't done anything with it, but if you're curious, <laughs> I do need to turn this so I can reach this side a little bit better. So with my um, medium to large um, round brush is what I'm doing this with in my kind of medium consistency of um, paint, I'm just going to do that. figure out where I want all of these. I'm gonna, I, I can always come back and make all of this thicker. Okay, I'm gonna go to a smaller brush now so I can have a little bit more. Um, I can have a little bit more um, flexibility in the size. Um, 
pocket. Hello Sam, I'm so glad your channel's been going steadily since the last time on your streams. Aww! Thanks, yeah! I'm... I don't even know what I'm at at this point. Over 4,000, I think. I don't think I've hit 5,000. But my Facebook is at 9,500. So I might do something special for 10,000. So let me know if anyone is interested in doing something special or if you have any suggestions of what that should be. Yeah, 4.5, yep. Yeah. Um, Pockets, when was the last time you came in for a stream? Do you remember what I was at? I don't even know how far away, like how long it's been. Alright, so some of these, some of these little guys are kind of like coming down a little bit. So you can... Um, and also, when you get into the smaller ones, they can be like jagged and things like that. So um, I'm not going to do too many up here because I know that it's going to be thicker up there. And I don't need to. Um, I'm going to stop there because I know that I can come back with black and add any that like I want to if I feel like it's necessary or I feel like there should be one that's not there, if that makes sense. Logged on late. When will the video be available to watch? Um, it should be available. Um, I'm pretty sure you can just scroll it back now. Um, but if you want to wait until after the live is over, you can do that too. Um, have you ever... Wait, go back. Uh, so I find when I'm drawing the line for the branch, I can't finish the branch as I don't have enough paint. I'm wondering... I wondered, is it because it's too thick and I need to add more water? Sometimes you need to add more water. Um, I would say that um, if you need to just finish it out, um, I tend to like to use a smaller brush or like a liner brush or just, or just use my brush thinner and get the basic shape or length or size, uh, not size, but um, like length of the... Uh, branch and then I'll come back in with more paint to thicken it um, so I mean you've probably you probably saw that I did that a few times um, um, have you ever done the template with projector instead of a transfer paper I don't have a projector but I'm sure that that would work just fine too um, if you have like a small projector you could just put it on the canvas I've done thing, um, we did a world map mural, um, it was just in black, but we did that with a projector, um, and it was, I don't know, goodness, it was a large painting, um, but we did that at my church, um, we put a projector and drew a line with it, and then colored it all in, um, so I know it's possible, I'm, I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard on a canvas too. Um... Maybe just one over 1k. Oh, yeah. I heard you through my mother-in-law telling me about your new endeavors on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, mother-in-law. Who's your mother-in-law? Um, 1k. That was, that was back right when I got monetized. That was in f February? Question mark? Um, I got monetized in February, so it must have been around that time. Because at that point, I had reached over... 1k subscribers and then um, I just had to get watch hours which was pretty easy because 
everybody's watching all the videos for my classes, so it, that wasn't wasn't too hard. Um, I've been in summer classes this summer, and I've been wanting to do acrylic painting for such a long time. Well, now's the time to get into it. There's so much free content online um, that it's it's pretty easy just to pick up a paintbrush and just go for it. Um, I used the template on my projector to do the tree. I can't ever get the branches to look as good, so I normally thought I'd give it a try. Yeah, I mean, trees, I feel like trees, ha trees don't have any sort of map to them. Um, this tree in particular has very thick at the base and then branches out really early, where as a lot, a lot of times they go up and then branch. This one has a lot of branches like that start at the bottom, so it's a lot different than what I'm used to. Um, boo, 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 boo. Thanks. I actually bought this painting last year for my son. Can't wait to do it myself. Nice. Um, you bought this painting or you bought like a painting kit? Um, okay, let me, I'll keep reading the, the description or the, the things, but I want to show you, um, after you get your branches in there, um, again, you can always, um, there's a bug, you can always add more branches once we get there. Um, but let's go ahead and use this and I will show you. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to get your black and don't saturate it. You want it just, um, let's see. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Do you see that? No, you can't. Um, okay. I'm going to do it right there. You see that? How it, it's like dispersing it. So I have this pinched, so it makes a little nice like bubble of a sponge. See that? And I come over here, I dab it a little bit, but I'm not like pressing down super hard. That way I can add this. So I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna start at the top because that's kind of where most of this is. And this is to get that base of it on there. And I'm gonna do the base of it over here. It's really thick over here, so I'm just going to lay it on. So now that you have kind of that base, I'm going to show you, you can come back in with your um, flat brush that I was talking about earlier. 
I'll, um, and then you can take it and you can dab it. And you can add a little bit more like leaf textures. You can use just the corner. You can use the whole thing. Just use different angles of your brush. into this um would definitely be interested in a special class i have second surgery tomorrow and anxious uh to start all the beautiful paintings you've done you've been doing oh we're all so grateful for you well thank you i really appreciate it hopefully your surgery goes well I have a projector for cutting sewing patterns, so I, have, I already have it set up. Yeah. Yeah, if you already have a projector, then go for it. Uh, what subjects do you like to paint the best? Landscapes, still life, animals, people? Um, I want to say landscapes and animals. I love animals. You'll probably notice my backdrop. I have a lot of animals. Um, I also enjoy like sea life though. So I don't know if that's like, I mean, that's, that's animals, but it's like specifically like sea life. Um, like I've done like dolphins and fish and turtles and I have a lot of <laughs> I have a lot of sea life type of stuff so um, but definitely animals like um, but then also florals like florals I love doing flowers and I'm really glad that other people also like doing flowers just as much because, let's be honest, flowers are great. <laughs> um, you could also do this with a filbert brush or any other brush that you can get to separate. And just to add texture. just have fun with it figure out which which um figure out what you like to do better whether it's the sponge or the or the um the brush i'm gonna go ahead and rinse out my brushes i think i'm pretty much done with this part. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a couple more 
small branches. Samantha, I just joined. You use oils to paint or just acrylics? Also, what do you recommend for beginners? Um, I use I use acrylics because for paint nights, I feel like it's easier. I also don't have the space. So with oils, you want to be in a well ventilated area, um, and I just don't have I don't have the space to be in a well ventilated area. We are in a two bedroom apartment. I paint in my bedroom. It's really bad, like ventilation. Um, like, like it's really bad. Um, like I'll try to open up, we'll try to have like, um, like the, the window open or something like that. And it just doesn't, there's no airflow at all. Um, so I don't do oils for beginners. I think acrylics is easier to grasp because you can have layers and layers dry. Um, and I think that that's easy to grasp versus oils. You have to work very differently. Um, but at the same time, blending is way easier in acrylic or in, um, in oils. So I think if you're wanting to get into big paintings, um, I would definitely say that like, I would say that oils is probably better because you can, um, things stay drier for long things stay wetter for longer for beginners though I like I don't know it's it's also hard to say because while I've watched a lot of videos of oils I've never actually done oils so I don't have any experience in like I don't have any hands-on experience with oils I've just watched a ton of videos like um I mean, Bob Ross was in oils. Um, if you've ever watched Kevin Hill, um, he's like, I feel like he's the modern day um, Bob Ross a little bit. Um, he does oils. He does acrylic sometimes, but for the most part, he does oils. I love his paintings. I've always wanted to try in acrylics one of his paintings. But I just, you know, between my own paintings and teaching and kids, I don't really have time to... I don't really have time to paint for myself very often. Alright, so I'm just adding all the tiny little details. Um, all the little, little ones. And again, this is super easy if you have a liner brush. How is your pregnancy going? I'm amazed at how much you do with two little ones. You know, pregnancy is going good. I am 33, 32 weeks. Wait, 33 weeks? I think I will be 33 on Wednesday. So I'm 32 weeks right now. Um, due end of September. And at this point, Kids for painting, it's pretty.
pretty easy in that um, I can just put the kids down or um, I mean the great thing is that my husband is home most of the time um, he works from home for the most part right now and he like when the kids aren't down and I need to do work um, he can he can watch them if necessary um, but then also like I don't know I only work I only technically work um, like Monday Thursday Friday because I kind of give myself two days where I'm like I'm not working um, so I just prep everything and I prep posts and um, social media nowadays is really um, really helpful and that you can schedule posts so even if I post sometimes I pre-posted that and I didn't I'm like you know so I don't work on Wednesday but my speed paintings go out on Wednesday so I prep everything you know on like the Monday before that sometimes I'll work on the weekends but it's not um, and plus a lot of my work is like computer work that I can do while you know the kids are playing in the living room and stuff like that so um, it's fairly it's fairly easy in that like the only time I actually have to be really involved in my work is during my paint nights or when I'm teaching my Patreon classes. Um, but other than that, it's pretty laid back. I have no clue how I'm going to be doing this with a newborn though. Because newborns need to eat all the time. So, um... The, I think the unicorn one on the 25th of October is the first one, the first live class that I'm back. Um, so hopefully, I mean, she'll be about a month old by then. So hopefully we'll be in a little bit of a, you know, a routine by then, maybe a little bit, a little bit. Um, and I'll be able to like, you know, get away and obviously teach for a two hour time slot <laughs> but but if you think about it it's more because I, I have like the setup and then I may or may not do a chat beforehand um, but yeah I kind of have to be organized with kids it's like I was saying earlier that if you want to paint or do something for yourself like you can't say oh I'll just do it in my free time you have to like plan your free time and make sure that you know make sure that you're setting that time aside or else it just won't get done especially when you have kids it just it doesn't work that way Alright, well, um, if anyone has any other questions, let me know right now. Now's the time to ask. Um, but other than that, we are pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and sign mine in one of the corners. I think I'll sign it in black over here. And 
and um, then we're all done. So thanks again for joining me, everyone. Um, if you missed the class and you would like to rewatch it, you can. Um, all my live streams save um, to my YouTube and you can watch them at any time after the class. Um, so yeah, go have a watch, enjoy. And then I also have a Facebook group. Um, let's see, community, let's see if this works. Maybe artist community. I just installed the Nightbot um, and so that I can give you guys um, commands and things like that so that it'll be easier to... Oh, there it is. It is community. Okay, perfect. Um, so down below, I just linked um, the artist community. Okay. And that is where you can share all your lovely artwork with me. Um, so join that share your artwork. I will be adding a picture of this into the albums of that group. Um, and then you can share it to the album and everybody can see everybody's from class. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me and we will see you next time. Have a great night. Bye.